Hi, this is uh, Tutor Nick P, and this is Quotes 219. The quote today is by Babe Ruth, a very famous old-time baseball player. Uh, in his day, he was probably the most famous baseball player that existed in his time. So, uh, let's look at his quote. Here's the quote. Never let the fear of striking out uh, keep you from playing the game. All right, so we got a baseball analogy, and, and in life we hear about a lot of baseball analogies. We often compare things to baseball. Baseball is still probably maybe the number one sport in America. Some people might argue that it's American football, too. Uh, but we do have a lot of analogies, and we get a lot of other phrases sometimes in our everyday English from baseball. But let's continue here. Uh, the ball player George Herman Ruth, that was his real name, uh, nicknamed Babe Ruth. Yeah, even that's kind of a funny story. I mean, because if you look at old photos, his face did look a little bit like a baby's face. So that's why he ended up getting the uh, nickname that Babe Ruth uh, was probably, or you could uh, say, arguably, the greatest ball player that ever lived. Of course, arguably, a lot of people have their favorite ball players, and, and Babe Ruth was a long time ago. But if you factor in a number of things, you really get impressed with his statistics. Um, of course, he did strike out a lot. Uh, like all home run hitters, uh, like all home run hitters. So home run hitters are famous for striking out. And this might be one of the reasons we say here, they often swing for the fences. Yeah, so it means sometimes like they're trying to hit a home run. They're trying to, you have to put your full energy into the swing to try to, you know, hit a home run. So, and when you try to hit a home run, you're, you're, you tend to be a little bit more likely to strike out uh, because your defenses are down a little bit more. Okay, uh, swing for the fences. Surprisingly, he is not even in the top 100 who struck out, and he is still third in home runs. Uh, and walks. Okay, so a couple of things to look at here. Yeah, a lot, if you ever look at the list of the people who are most famous for striking out, there's a lot of home run hitters, right? You know, right in the near the top of the list. I actually expected him to be in the top 100, but I don't know what his number is, but he's beyond the top 100. I don't know if he still made the top 200, but he's. Uh, I was kind of surprised to find out that he's not in the top 100. Um, and of course he walked a lot, you know, because a lot of pitchers were afraid to pitch to him because he was such a good hitter. He had a great batting average as well. Not all home run hitters have great batting average as well. Plus he played in the early days of baseball. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, they say nowadays in our modern times, the ball is more live. So and it bounces more, so it has more spring when you hit it. So it's actually easier to hit a home run today than it was like about 100 years ago. Uh, and in his day, when he led for, especially at the beginning of his career, when he led in home runs, like he'd hit like 40 or 50 home runs in a year. And number two was like 18 home runs. You know, it was like half, so... He was far, far ahead of them. I think it wasn't until there was another Yankee ball player called Lou Gehrig came along that gave him any competition. Uh, that was, I think Lou Gehrig actually beat him out in a few years. Uh, but still, uh, you know, uh, Babe Ruth had a long career. Um, okay, good. However, if you factor in that Babe Ruth was a full-time pitcher with a very impressive pitching record for eight years. This is another thing. I don't know of any other cases of anybody who had such a long, uh, you know, a, a significant pitching career, like eight years of pitching, and then started to become like a real home run hitter. You know, of course, he had a few home runs as a pitcher, but with a pitcher, you know, uh, because of you don't want to destroy your arm, you only pitch every three, four, or five days. So you don't get to play every day. So So you're very limited on how often you get to bat and uh, home runs that you could hit. And his uh, his pitching record was really good. He had twice as many wins as he had losses. So he was actually an excellent pitcher as well. It's, it's surprising that they even changed him to a hitter because, you know, sometimes they think of your pitching as, as being more important than hitting. Uh, and, and remember, he also is connected to what the Boston Red Sox think as, uh, you know, they they think that they were jinxed because he originally started with the Boston Red Sox. That's where he was a pitcher. 
Then they, uh, they, I think they sold him or traded him to the Yankees. And they felt like ever since that they were jinxed. And that's where the Yankees made him the hitter. And that's where he turned into the, you know, one of the greatest home run hitters that ever existed. Okay, let's go on. Uh, however, we factor in that Babe Ruth was guy. So both Hank Aaron and Bobby Bonds had thousands of at-bats, more than Babe Ruth. Yeah, so Babe Ruth is now number three. But I remember when I was a kid, he was still number one. Uh, finally, Hank Aaron broke his record, but I think Hank Aaron had really almost three or 4,000 at-bats more than Babe Ruth, so that's a lot more at-bats, and again, remember I told you about the live ball and the ball that's more dead, you know, in Babe Ruth's time, and then uh, Bobby Bonds, Bobby Bonds was closer, I think he only had a couple of, well, almost 2,000 more at-bats than, than Babe Ruth. Uh, yeah, his, his statistics were closer, but Bobby Bonds, of course, you know, he had the controversy of taking, uh, you know, the, uh, drug enhancers. Uh, it was a little odd with Bobby Bonds' career. I remember, remember, as he got older, he started to get better. You know, usually when people hit the peak of their career, and they peak for some while, for a while, and then they tend to go down, he started to go up higher, which was a little odd. Uh, there, so you do wonder about him if he really, you know. Uh, I think they they do say that he was taking those drugs, so that would of course give him a, a huge advantage. That thing did not exist in Babe Ruth's day. But anyway, getting back to the quote, quote's very important here. Uh, with this quote, ba, uh, Babe Ruth is letting you know: don't let the fear of failing stop you from pursuing your dreams or even participating uh, in what you love. That's basically what he's saying. Yeah, don't never let the fear of striking out uh, keep you from uh, playing the game. So you, you got to realize that as long as you're in there and as long as you're competing, you got to have a lot of failures. You're not going to win every time, and you're going to have bad days. Uh, you just have to put up with that. You pro uh, so let's continue here. Uh, there is a lot of failure in life. Uh, it is how we learn, and often we cannot hit those home runs uh, or reach high points in life. Yeah, a lot of times we even use that, you know, to say that you did really well or that you hit a home run, meaning you did just about as good as you possibly could do in something uh, without having quite a few failures in between. Anyway, I hope you got it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.